everybody, Dr. Chris, orthopedic surgeon and sports medicine physician. And today I'm reacting to rugby injuries. Yeah, that's what I'm doing that. I react to a few sports so far. Hockey, basketball, baseball, UFC, football, and World Cup soccer. In the comments, many of you have said, hey, Chris, you gotta do rugby. Today, I'm gonna do that. And I'm gonna give you the breakdown on how I think these injuries occurred and what injuries I think they suffered from. Before I get started, I wanna say shout out and thank you to a number of people right there. Thank you very much for recommending that we do rugby. Yes, there will be some injury footage shown. Yeah, I got it. Make sure if you don't want to see that, you watch one of my other videos, like when I did the Rocks workout, or the Ackerman workout, or when I operated on an orange. I'm not sure which one to cut here. That being said, let's get right to it. Apparently this first one is of a guy named Morgan Stoddard, and let's see what happens. All right, so hey, running, boom, boom, okay. So we have a tackle, and I'm not exactly sure right from the first film exactly what's going on, so I have to wait till I see the slow-mo versions. Boom. Okay, so you see the slow-mo version here. He is being tackled by a player who catches him from behind. As he does that, his left foot is in plantar flexion, which means that the toes are pointed towards the ground. The player that has tackled him starts to drag him down backwards. The foot, which is in plantar flexion, is trapped, has no place left to go. I've said this a million times. And I've said it so many times that you people keep telling me I gotta make a t-shirt, which we're gonna do in the very near future. Bones are absolutely amazing in compression, but they suck in rotation. And so you can see here that as he starts to fall backwards and the foot is internally rotated at a given point, when the forces are too great, the torsional forces, or the forces that are applied in rotation, when those are too great for the bone, the bone gives up, boom and we have a tibia fracture. It, it could be an ankle fracture down at the very end of the tibia, but I think this actually involves the shaft a little bit higher up because it occurs only a few inches down from the white stripe in his sock. So I would say that the fracture probably occurs at the junction between the middle and the lower third. Pretty much a tibial shaft fracture, and you can see that they have to stretcher him off the field because he is not gonna be walking on that. My call on that one would be that he's had a, a tibia fracture, and um, I'm pretty sure that this is not just an isolated tibia fracture, but that this is probably a tibia fibula or a tib fib fracture. And for that, he's gonna need operative fixation, most likely an intramedullary nail, which will go down the center of the shaft, uh, and we'll put that in through the knee, and he'll require internal fixation of the fibula fracture as well. Assuming that this was a closed injury, something like that is typically gonna take on the order of two to three months to heal, and then he'll have to do his uh, rehabilitation afterwards before he can uh, return to play. If this is an open fracture, meaning that the bone has come through the skin, what people com commonly refer to as a compound fracture, then this can significantly delay his post-injury recovery. If this was an open fracture, this may take nine, 10, maybe even 12 months to heal. And it could be a significantly long time before he is able to return to sport. So for this next one, we have uh, Camille Lopez. So let's watch this and see what happens to him. All right, so I'm gonna assume he's a guy running with the ball. Boom, he's tackled. You can't really see what's going on here. The second view here is from behind. Boom. Okay, a player who's being tackled from behind. Because rugby is a sport where there are collisions, but you don't have on equipment, they don't tend to do head-to-head -head collisions quite the same as they do in American football. So a lot of the tackles that they do in rugby are from the side or from behind, and you tend to wrap up the athlete and roll him to the ground. The problem with that is that then you leave appendages or extremities which are kind of out in space which are ideally suited 
to have somebody roll up on that. And so we can see that occur right here. Just as in the first video we saw that a guy's foot got rolled up on, again we have something similar happening here. This one's a little bit different because in the previous example we had somebody whose ankle went into internal rotation. In this example we have somebody whose foot now goes into external rotation, meaning away from the body. Again, at some point the bone says I cannot handle the force of this rotation anymore and it gives up. Because the defender's leg is at the level of the ankle, in this particular case it looks like he suffered an ankle fracture. Try and slow this down, boom. Yeah, now that I look at this additional angle, I think that the fracture has actually occurred higher up and it has involved both the tibia and the fibula. And again, this is gonna require operative fixation. If it's at the level of the ankle or within five centimeters, less than five centimeters from the level of the ankle, then this is going to be treated with plate fixation. That would require an incision on the inside part of the ankle to fix the tibia and an, and an incision on the outside part of the ankle to fix the fibula. If it's further than five centimeters away from the ankle joint, then this is something that we could treat again with intramedullary nail fixation of the tibia. The fixation will depend on how far or how close this is to the ankle joint. As with the first player, we could be looking at anything from five months if this is a closed injury with relatively little comminution or other damage, all the way up to 12 months or more if this were an open injury and there were significant comminution. Comminution, of course, meaning that instead of just two simple fragments, you have multiple fracture fragments. So for this next one here, we have Cameron Seraldo. We have a player who is running with the ball, and he is tackled by three different players from the other team. Now you can imagine that when you have a collective collision between four players, limbs are kind of gonna fly all over the place. The tackler who is the furthest in back trips over his own teammate as he is attempting to tackle the runner up high. It looks like he plants his left leg and then he is kind of knocked off his feet and thrown off balance and then he just kind of falls onto the pile. You can see right away, as soon as he hits the ground, that something is not right. Because if you look at his right foot, you can see that his right foot is on at a 90 degree angle to what it normally should be. And you can see that he's in quite a bit of distress there. Right away, we know from this that he has a dislocation. There might also be a fracture, but there's a dislocation. So you say to me, well, how do I know that there's a dislocation? His foot's on sideways, thank you. To, to put it simply, his foot is on on sideways. So yes, because the foot is on at an awkward angle, you go, oh, well, it's, it's obviously, it's dislocated. It's not quite so simple. How do we know that it's likely just a dislocation and not also a fracture dislocation? If you had a fracture, you're gonna have loss of structural rigidity of the bone. So generally, it might be temporarily held at an awkward angle. But when you lift the leg up, such as he does here, you're going to see the segment of the bone that is on the far end or distal end is going to be flapping around or flopping around because there's nothing holding it in place. However, in this particular case, you can see he holds his foot up. It's externally rotated 90 degrees and it is stuck in that position. It does not move. So that tells you that there is structural rigidity or structural continuity of the tibia it's intact down to the bottom, but that the foot is no longer connected to the tibia in the way that it should be. It's not in its anatomical position. This looks to me as if he has suffered simply a dislocation and not also a fracture dislocation. If this is truly simply a dislocation, then this is something that can be reduced, hopefully quite easily, without operative intervention. On occasion, when you have an ankle dislocation, some of the tendons that run behind the ankle will become interposed or stuck inside the joint and they will block you from doing what's called a closed reduction so that means we're just going to pull on the foot and put it back where it's supposed to be and we usually will do that under conscious sedation with medication in some
some cases, we attempt to do it as a closed procedure and we are unable to do so. We have to open it up with an operation to take those structures out to allow it to be reduced. If he's lucky, he won't require that. We'll be able to just be simple closed reduction, give him some sedation, pull on it, it'll pop right back in. And then we will temporarily immobilize his ankle to allow the soft tissues to rest and to heal. He'll follow that with physiotherapy to regain his range of motion because usually things will be a bit stiff after that and regain his strength. If he has suffered some kind of ligament disruption, which is quite possible with an ankle injury, then he may require bracing after he is healed or he may require at some future time an elective procedure for ankle stabilization where those ligaments are repaired. Rehabilitation from this injury it could be anywhere from about six to eight weeks. It could be closer to five to six months if surgery was required or if he had more extensive injuries. So I'm gonna say ankle dislocation and I'm betting that he had a closed reduction which would allow him to get back to play relatively quickly. Simmons it is who plays it. Ferguson, 19 year old, he's a rangy type and he's a good move rate of dummy half. A good move around a dummy half. Okay, so this next one is of a player named Gerald Yao Ye. Let's see what happens here. Boom. I don't know exactly what happened, but I can see awkward landing. Ugh. Okay. And the South Sydney I, I had to watch this a few times, a few different angles to figure out exactly what's going on. We have two opposing players who are both going for the ball, and we can see that one of the players goes up for the ball, and as he's concentrating on the ball, he's not really paying attention to his feet in space. Looks like an ankle. His weight kind of shifts backwards. When he actually contacts the ground, gracious mate someone heard a snap as he does that he collides with the other player well i should say the other player collides with him the other player lands on his thighs so it kind of drives his leg into the ground and it stops his leg from sliding out or moving from underneath him and as we've seen with two of the other examples, anytime your foot gets pinned to the ground and then your center of gravity moves away from that foot, either forward, behind, or is rotated away, that's gonna spell trouble for your lower extremity. And so here we can see that his foot is pinned underneath him as his center of gravity is moving away and to the right. Before his body has hit the ground, his tibia has given up, it's said, I'm done and we have a tibia fracture. What you can notice here, you can see that there is a sharp point. And you can't really see anything um, sticking out through the skin, such as with Kevin Ware's injury in the basketball video, which we talked about. These fractures uh, are associated with a higher level of complication and they take a lot longer to um, heal. But here you can still see that there is a sharp point that is right at the level of the fracture. So right away I know that this is a compound or an open fracture. So I know that the bone has now come out through the skin because normally if you had a, a closed fracture of the tibia, you would have skin that's covering the fracture end. You would have more of a rounded appearance. But as soon as I see a sharp line, a sharp edge, I know inside that sock, the bone has come out through the skin. So I'm gonna say a compound tibia fracture on that one. Based on the, the amount of flexion that occurred there, this is not just an isolated tibia fracture. Again, this is gonna be a tib-fib fracture, but the tibia portion of it at the very least is gonna be compound or open. And this means that his recovery from this is going to be significantly delayed. Because of the amount of energy that's required to create an open fracture, degree of damage is likely to be more severe. than with a closed fracture, you also have the 
added complication risk, potential infection from the fact that you've had an open injury, and it really depends to some degree on the size of the wound that's associated with the open fracture. As I mentioned in a previous video, depending on the level of the fracture, again, this will determine whether he has intramedullary nail fixation or um, open reduction internal fixation with the plate. So we have the next one here, and first thing I gotta say, this guy running with the ball looks like a truck. So he's running with the ball, he is running with purpose, and now we have a guy who runs up to tackle him. He is running in on what's called an intercept angle, not head to head directly at, so that's appropriate. The guy who is running with the ball strikes the tackler in the face with his thigh and his knee, right in the side of his cheek. And he goes down, the ball carrier um, carries on. <laughs> the next clip that we see is the tackler now walking across the field with a mouthful of blood. And you can see here that his jaw is messed up. And you can just see, because his mouth is open, the teeth on the right hand side of his face are not aligned. So instantaneously you know that he has, at the very least, a jaw fracture involving the right hand mandible. Probably he's got more than one fracture line and he has something higher up because you can see the point of contact you can see a big bruise right on the side of his cheek higher up here he may have also fractured the maxilla which is this part of your skull right here he's not going to need an orthopedic surgeon he's going to need a dental surgeon because that's going to be a problem he is going to need probably plate and screw fixation and he may also need his jaw to be wired shut Because he was struck in the head, he may have also had a concussion. That's probably the least of his worries. He will be out much longer for the injuries that he suffered to his jaw than he would be for the concussion. Watch this. Come Red Harold, yeah. Just four hours. So let's move on to the last one here. We have a player named Chev Walker. I guess this is our theme for the day, being tackled from behind. So we have Chev Walker, who I'm assuming is the ball carrier here. He receives the ball, and then he starts to run downfield. And as he does so, he is tackled by another player from behind who wraps him up and tries to wrestle him to the ground. We've seen this mechanism in three of the other videos that we reviewed today. Chev Walker's foot here is in plant protection. It is now pinned to the ground because he has pleats. He is being dragged down. The tackler is tackling him from behind, but to the side. So we now have an element of rotation. As he is tackling him, the tackler's right leg swings behind Chev Walker's left knee. We have planted left foot. We have a post or the opposing uh, player's leg around which to bend Chev Walker's leg. And we have an external rotation force. You all know by now what's gonna happen because bones suck in rotation. Boom, the leg breaks right around the post posing player's leg. And the bone cries uncle, gives up, and this fracture occurs quite high up actually. In the opening 10 minutes probably at the junction between the proximal and the middle one-thirds of the tibia. Again, below the surface of the sock, you can see a sharp point. So what does that mean? You tell me, you're right, compound or open fracture. We know that there's a fracture and there's loss of continuity because as he holds his leg up in the air, the lower part of his leg is dangling down freely and moving all around. He has got a open fracture of the tibia and probably the fibula at that level. This is bad injury. And because of where it is, we know that this will be something that we can treat primarily with an intramedullary nail plus or minus plate fixation for the fibula. Because it's open, the rehabilitation for this is going to be extended. This is an injury that can take anywhere from six to 12 months to heal, and it's gonna be a long time before he returns to playing regularly. And for all of those people who say that I tend to not speak in English, let me break it down for you Cole's Notes version. This guy broke his leg, and the bone stuck out. And so now, we're gonna put that back into place, we're gonna put the bone back inside the skin, sew the skin back up. We're gonna put a rod down through the knee and lock it. Whoop! 
with balls top and bottom. Bob's your uncle. Dobson, Newton finds Chev Walker. Walker has got senior on his back and down he goes. I guess that's about it. Today, I've been reacting to rugby injuries and giving you the breakdown. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you can get notified when we post new content. Cause like, what else would you be doing? Okay. If you are a returning member of the intern army, <laughs> you know what to do. Go hit the like button and share this bad boy with a friend. If you have any ideas about other things that I can react to, it can be sports, it can be whatever, let me know in the comment section down below. And as always, that's been a word from Dr. Chris, not your everyday ortho. Yeah.